CataractCoach.com, resident week, post deer sub caps for cataract. So let's figure out some advice for a higher margin of safety and some better efficiency in this case. We've got a resident who's operating anonymously. There's a side port incision, a paracentesis, and now blue dye. Okay, now, again, I don't really need tripan blue dye in a case like this. I understand it can make the lens capsule less elastic, make it a little stiffer, make it be it's easier for the rexus, but you've got a great red reflex. And you want to get out of the habit of doing things that are inefficient or extra steps that are really not needed. If you have a great red reflex, like in this case, you just don't need it. Forget about the cost issue, which we talked about before. So here comes the main incision with the keratome. And a little, that's not too bad. It looks like a little on the short side for me. And let's see, more viscoelastic. Yeah, that's a beautiful red reflex. Now, with a very extensive PSC cataract like this, it's not going to be a very dense nucleus, right? You can see there's not much nuclear density in this. So in a case like this, I really like to get that lens nucleus up out of the bag, away from the posterior capsule, because you're not going to have to put much energy at all, a very little ultrasonic energy. Beautiful rexus, by the way. Good job there. Now, it's obviously a younger patient. I can just guess by those eyelashes, thick, young eyelashes, right? No gray eyelashes at all. This just looks like a younger patient. Typically, all right, PSC cataracts tend to be in younger patients. Oh, there you go. You brought the nucleus up. Good job. Good job. Also, at your stage, put some viscoelastic behind the nucleus. There's a gap in that gap, so you have a barrier behind the nucleus and in front of the posterior cap, so you have a little extra wad or aliquot of viscoelastic. Now let's see the nucleus removal. So yeah, these PSC patients are typically on the younger side, and so it begs the question, what IOL are you going to place here? So let's see. Chopper going in, FACO probe. Yeah, chopper behind it. I just split it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now, it's a little bit on the gummy side because it's a softer nucleus. So that's a, that was a good technique. I like that a lot. Good job there. So the question is for this case, what kind of lens you put in? What do you choose as a refractive error? And this obviously is going to depend a lot on the patient. Now, anything is going to be an improvement from that PSC cataract, which probably induced poor vision as well as a lot of glare. Not only the acuity is down, but the glare must have been intolerable. So in a case like this, let's say the patient is a plus three hyperope to begin with, and the patient is 55 years old. Well, that's an easy one. If you put a monofocal lens and make that patient plano or amotropic, this patient will be thrilled. So that's an easy one. What if the patient is a minus two mile, 55 years old? Does a lot of computer work all day. Ooh, that's a tougher one, right? Do you aim for plano with a monofocal lens? And then they don't have the near vision, or do you leave them minus two? And then finally... Do you do an EDOF lens, extended up the focus lens, or maybe you do a, a trifocal, multifocal lens? Is that your option? Because they obviously had a lot of glare and poor image quality from the cataract for the PSC changes. So putting in a trifocal is going to be improvement in their vision. There'll be less glare. So all are reasonable options. I mean, leave your comment below. Let's kind of see what the group thinks. What would the group put in this eye? Let's assume it's a 55-year-old patient with a PSC cataract, and the patient's a minus 2 myope spherical, and the patient uh, does a lot of computer work. What would you do? And the patient says, yeah, if I can get rid of glass, I would love to. But I definitely got to work for another 10, 15 years in my job of doing computer work as a programmer all day long. Okay. Now cleaning up here, clean up the cortex. Again, good job here. I'd set up the camera a little bit. I like to keep the eye in the center of the camera. Sometimes it's not easy. And I know your view through the scope is wider and larger than the view through the camera. But um, there we go. Cortex cleaned up nicely. Be careful polishing up that poster cap so you can do a little bit. But uh, if you're a resident still, it's okay. If you leave a little smudgy stuff behind, you can do a YAG capsulotomy later, you know, three months later, whatever. Filling the bag with our viscoelastic. Nice, clean bag. That looks like HPMC, right? HPMC is hydroxypropyl methylcellulose. That's very common outside the U.S. because it's very uh, easy to uh, acquire. It's very inexpensive. It's made from plant material, cellulose, and it um, does not require refrigeration. And even in the USA, a full 1cc of that is probably only $30 or $40, which is less than half the cost of some other viscoelastics. Which, as you know, the other ones, in general, are made from rooster combs. Yeah, seriously. Google it. You'll be surprised. So here you go. Cleaning out the viscoelastic from the eye. This HPMC comes out pretty easily. It doesn't stick too much. And now going behind the lens, good move, very nice, very nice. And by the way, the draping is good, eyes in pretty good position, other than the scope not being fully centered, but you've done a really great job here. I'm impressed. Keep up the good work, and please leave a comment below. What would you put for this patient in terms of eye choice? Minus two myope, 55 years old, 
and says, hey, if you can give me autoglasses, I'd love it. Leave your comments below and let's see what the group thinks.